you know what? <laughs> Welcome to Encore, the show for and about Encore entrepreneurs by the Encore Entrepreneur Institute. We're here to talk about small business and entrepreneur. So let's get started. Welcome our special guest today, Cherie Warwick at Profit Partner. How are you today, Cherie? I'm good, Janice. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Thank you for coming because we want to get our businesses funded. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're discussing okay. business plans that actually get funded, that get the money yes. that you need to start your business. So let's get started. So Cherie, tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Sure, sure. So my name is Cherie and um, I own my own company uh, full time. All I do is write business plans for companies. Now, there are a couple of different reasons why people come to me and ask for a business plan. One of the primary reasons is because they're looking to get funds for their business. Either they're a startup or their business is growing and expanding. So um, I have been doing business plans uh, since 2011, maybe. Um, I can tell you a little bit of backstory about that. I fell into it because my mother needed a business plan for her company. And the bank said it was one of the best business plans they'd ever read. I thought that everybody could write a business plan, but I discovered that uh, a lot of people have trouble either with the writing narrative piece of it or the financials. And um, I was able, because of my background, to do both, um, which is a rare gift. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So I ended up writing this book. So I'll show it to everybody now. It's called Creating Business Plans That Actually Get Financed. And it's a very simple read. I say you can read it by the full side or the fireside. Um, or over a glass of wine uh, in, an e in an evening. So um, it's really meant to help companies understand what investors or bankers are looking for within the business plan document itself. Okay, so, well, we had Thea, she asked, what is your background that, that gives you that advantage to be able to write <laughs> both parts of a business plan, the financials, which I would never even touch. I would hire mm -hmm. someone to do. And then, of course, the narrative part of the business plan. How, how, how what do you do? What did you do? Um, you know, in school, I was just always naturally good at writing. Um, mm -hmm. I had a very strict mother and grandmother and great grandmother who were educators. And they really believed in reading and writing. And, you know, there was no such thing as a C in our household. <laughs> um, so uh, I always grew up with that. And then in college, I became very interested in business. So I have a major in finance. Um, and through the course of my 20s, I worked at a lot of different companies doing a lot of different things in the realm of finance. And when I turned about 29, 30, my mother started a bookkeeping company. And that's actually the business that she was growing and expanding and needed the business plan for. But, you know, for two years uh, prior to me writing that business plan, all I was doing with her and for her was helping her clients create their financial um, uh, reports. So their profit and loss statements, their balance sheets. So I learned uh, how to craft that information you know, from working in my mother's bookkeeping business. And then I was able to mold the two, the narrative and the financials. That's perfect. I mean, that's yeah. a perfect experience to do what you do. Yeah, it is. I, I, I got a lot of practice on other people's businesses. So. All right, right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. Let me tell you guys that I put up a link to her book on Amazon. So if you want to buy it, it's right there. You'll see the short link. So uh, you can check it out yourself. Uh, I know you have it available in paperback and Kindle. So, you know, mm -hmm. check it out and yeah. let us know what you think. Anyway, let me go on. Let me ask you um, about business plans. And because mm -hmm. people think of it as like writing a book, you know, mm -hmm. no one has time if you're running a business full time to write a book. So how much time must one devote to writing a business plan? Does it need to be a book? Does it need to be like 30, 50 pages long or, or what can we do? Well, if you are writing a business plan 
for strategy purposes, my suggestion to you is not to write a book. Instead, write a one page business plan. I wholeheartedly agree with that. In fact, for my own company, I have a one page business plan for the year 2016 that's in my office. Every morning I sit at my computer and I review my business plan. If you're raising capital, there's no way to get around the 30 to 50 page business plan. It's impossible for a couple of different reasons. Yeah, this is true. A couple of different reasons. Number one is your investors or the bank, they're going to ask you a lot of questions about your business. So your business plan is a way to flush out all of the questions that you're going to be asked so that when you're asked those questions in real life, you're prepared. So I consider the business plan as a way of preparing you for the inquisition <laughs> that you're going to have. I mean, it's just natural. It's a natural part. Um, so it generally, genu, generally, sorry, generally takes about 40 to 60 hours to write a good business plan. The fill in the blank templates don't work. And the reason for that is because if you're starting a restaurant, that's different from starting a salon, which is different from having a tech company. And there's really no fill in the blank template for your experience, the team that you're putting together, the marketing that you're doing. So um, I know I answered a lot of questions in there, but no, really, uh, you know, really, let's be honest. If you're raising capital, then you're going to have to put in the work it takes to raise the capital. Right, right. Well, yeah. once a long time ago, <laughs> I won <laughs> a business plan contest mm -hmm. um, when I lived in Philadelphia. It was from by the uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin Technology Center in the Philadelphia Business Journal. And it was the first time I ever wrote a business plan, but I put my heart and soul into this thing. Mm -hmm. And I did the whole narrative part, but I had to, of course, hire someone to do my financials. They also mm -hmm. said it was one of the best business plans they have ever, ever seen. I really did not expect to win the business plan portion. I just was trying to get attention for my business. And yeah. they put the category in and told me that we won. One of the things that I did with my business plan, which kind of sounds like it might be part, part like the one page business plan. I'll, I'll, I'll have you explain that a little bit later because I need mm -hmm. to know what a one page business plan looks like. But was I, I had a timeline in there. And the reason I, I mentioned to, this to you before, but the timeline helped me to keep my business plan on my desk so that mm -hmm. I looked at it on a regular basis to make sure I was on target with my goals and on point with my plan. So I'm not sure if that's, is that something that's usually done in a business plan? Is that what a one page business plan looks like? Yeah. So depending on the business and who you are as a business owner and what you need within that one page, you may put things like milestones in there. You may put things um, in terms of um, a certain amount of prospects that you want calling you and what you're going to do to get those prospects. Some people like their goals in their one page business plans and other people like their tasks okay. in their one page business plan. So I'm much more of a task person. I know that for me to reach my goals, here are the things I must do on a daily, on a weekly, on a quarterly basis in order to reach my income and revenue goals. And in order to, to contact people, um, in, in terms of being able to assist them with writing their business plans. So one of the things you and I found each other on something called help a reporter out. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the ways that I reach my goals in terms of publicity is every day I look at the Harrow report and I only respond to people who are asking something specific about business plans. Now, the truth is that happens probably about once every two, two and a half months. But imagine if I did not have help a reporter out, I wouldn't know who you are today and I wouldn't be interviewed by you. So um, one of the goals that I have is publicity. And one of the ways that I reach that goal is, you know, through through that uh, Harrow system. Harrow is a great source for mm -hmm. anyone that's looking to you know, expand their marketing 
and to get the publicity that they want because they're but three times a day they come out with reporters yes. looking for people. And then if you do miss a day, you could actually miss someone who's looking for you. So you really mm -hmm. have to check three times a day to see if there's something there for you. Yes. Yeah. And if I may say this, the biggest thing that everyone needs to have uh, two things are patience and persistence in business. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens overnight, including raising funding, including writing a business plan to raise funding. You have to have patience and you have to have persistence. You said that your business plan was one of the best that the people read, that you mm -hmm. showed it to. The truth is these people see thousands of business plans every year and only the top one to 2% of them are any good. So if you write a good business plan and you go in with a really good pitch, if you're asking for $2 million, why are you winging it? Why not practice? Start practicing on your friends, your family, but also people in business that um, aren't scared to give you bad feedback <laughs> or constructive criticism, I should say. Um, I think it's very, very important if you're serious about raising capital that you take it seriously. No, you're absolutely right. Actually, what you said, and I'm just responding to Thea Haro is help a reporter out is, was the original name. Now it's helpareporter.com. I just put the link there for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I'll make sure I, I will put it in the description link for the uh, YouTube video as well. Now, Cherie, let me ask you, mm -hmm. Do banks hold you to what you put in your business plan? Like if I say, I'm gonna have this number of clients by this date, do they actually want to see that happen? Are they gonna be calling me up and say, hey, you didn't do it? <laughs> um, okay, so My what happens is, right? <laughs> okay, so, so what happens is a bank will, most banks will come to you on a quarterly or every six month basis to make sure that your business is growing and you're moving forward. However, if you said, I'm going to have 200 clients by January and you only have 185, they're not going to call your loan in. Um, so, you know, what you're really looking for, one of the things I say with a business plan is if you can have conservative revenues and aggressive expenses and still make a profit, that's what you wanna show within your business plan because that way you're conservative in terms of the amount of, of uh, revenues and uh, clients that you need to have on a monthly or an annual basis depending on the type of business you have. Now you said they can call the loan in. So do they do that? Mm -hmm. Well, like they will actually take their money back. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen that happen? Uh, you know what? I saw it happen a lot when the crash happened. Oh. So, you know, uh, we're kind of getting into a deep conversation here, but <laughs> banks have what they call a portfolio of loans. And that portfolio is different in terms of the types of industries. They they have something called risk management. So they don't want to be all in real estate or all in just small businesses, mom and pop shops. They want a wide range of businesses that they have loans for. So um, you asked about the recalling. A lot of recalling did happen during the um the crash because they have to, by federal law, have a certain amount of loans to deposits ratio. And, you know, I, I, it's a little bit more than we can talk about here, but they're mm -hmm. constantly monitoring that. So, yes, I have seen loans called in before. Um, I've also seen a, a couple of loans outside of that called in because the bank got nervous about the business owner. Um, Wow. So, yeah, you know, it doesn't happen often. I'll say that it doesn't happen often. But you want to know that you borrow money from the bank. It, it truly is borrowed money. Right. I would have never mm -hmm. thought they would just call my loan back. And if I didn't meet maybe some goals, that's interesting to know. So mm -hmm. thanks. for sharing And know that they on. keep they have collateral. Every every yeah. bank loan has collateral with it. So if you don't you know, comply, on. then they can take your collateral. Wow. That's, yeah. that's uh, deep, but I guess that's part of the risk of being in business and 
you know, when you want to go for a loan, you want to make sure that you're able to pay it back. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of the big things outside of the um, the crash. I haven't seen anybody who was not consistently paying back their loan actually have, you know, um, their loan called. But it's when you start missing three, four months that the bank starts to get nervous. Oh, OK, let yeah. me ask you about the process of writing a business plan to receive funding. So yes. what is that like and what are banks and angel investors looking for within your business plan itself? OK, so let's take the second question first. What okay. are banks and angel investors looking for? So one of the things I ask people and a lot of them don't know is what is an angel investor? So I always start off with talking about there are three big types of um, investors out there. One is banks. As we all know, we see them on every corner. In order to get a bank loan, you've got to have credit, you've got to have collateral, you've got to have 20% of the loan you need in cash. I mean, 20%, if you need $100,000, you have to have $20,000 in the bank, in a business bank account. Right. Um, credit, collateral, cash, and then cash flow is the fourth thing. So you've got to be able to prove that you can pay that loan back every single month. If you're missing any of those four things, I highly suggest you don't go for a bank loan because it's going to be wow. very hard to get one. Then okay. you go to the other extreme, which are venture capitalists. Venture capitalists are typically, typically looking for companies that are going to be a billion dollars or more. They're looking for the next Facebook or the next Shake Shack, companies that are going to be super, super huge that are going to be sold on the stock exchange one day. If you don't fit on this side and you don't fit on this side, then you have to go in the middle here. That's an angel investor. An angel investor is somebody who will give you money for your business without collateral necessarily and without, um, I won't necessarily say checking your credit, but with, without actually considering your credit score. Angel investors have started to check credit if they don't know you to make sure that you're a real person, that you're stable, that if you said you've lived in your same house for 10 years, that there's proof of it, you know. So I can't say they won't check your credit, but they're not looking to see whether you have a 700 versus a 620. Okay. Um, so that's the difference between a bank and an angel investor. So your, sec your first question was, well, what's the process of writing business plans for these groups? Okay. okay, so there are five parts to a business plan for a bank. And this is where you want to get your pen and pencil and paper ready. Number one is you got to prove market opportunity. So what problem are you solving in the marketplace? How many people have that problem? You know, what kind of impact are you going to make? Number two, you got to have a marketing plan. I call it customer acquisition and retention. How do we get customers? How do we retain them? How do we do something called upsell them? Which means, you know, the famous one is McDonald's saying, would you like fries with your hamburger? Um, you got to get people coming in and spending and then spending more. And I'll give you another one for upselling. I get my nails done and the ladies are always asking, do you want, you know, pedicure today? And do you want your eyebrows done and things like that? So us ladies, we know <laughs> upselling if, if you go to get your nails done. Right. Um, the third part is your team. So you have to talk about your team and why your team can execute that business plan. Part four is your competition and your competitive advantages. Uh, if you think you have no competition, you're wrong. Everybody has competition and you have to let, uh, you have to be aware of it and actually place it in the business plan. Part five is the financials. And a lot of people do not put their assumptions within the financials. So for example, I do a lot of business plans for restaurants. And one of the things that I will say is on a daily basis or on a weekly basis, we expect to serve X amount of meals and each ticket or each meal is going to bring in X amount of dollars in revenues. Those are the types of things you need to place within your business plan financial section. 
So those are the five parts to a bank plan. And then if you're going for an angel investor, you need a sixth section, which is called the exit plan. And all that means is if an angel investor gives you $200,000 for your business, how are they going to get their money back? And, you know, a famous way you see this uh, talked about is on Shark Tank. Uh, if you don't watch Shark Tank and you're going after capital, I would suggest you get on YouTube and you see as many episodes as possible when they start negotiating uh, valuation and exit plans. Now, that's great advice. Thea wants to know a little bit more about the specifics of the financials, like what parts are in, in there, cash flow projections. Mm -hmm. You talked about assumptions a little bit. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that we need to know about? Yeah, so you need your profit and loss statement forecast. You need a balance sheet. Uh, you need a break even analysis. And um, a couple of things I'll put in there as well. Um, I like to have um, my customer acquisition cost and my value of a customer. So what do I mean by that? I mean, um, how much does it take for you to actually attract a customer? And then how much do we expect that customer to spend with us over a one year period and then over their lifetime? So, um, there are other things that I will place within a business plan, depending on the business, depending on the industry. Sometimes I will do um, an industry comparison where I look at the business. Um, for example, I'm doing a, a business plan right now for a pizzeria and I look at the businesses financials and then I look at the industry financials. And if there's any variance between the two, I explain why, um, the industry's financials are different from that business's financials. So it really does depend. Um, but the, the standard things are the PL, the balance sheet, and um, the cash flow forecast and the break even analysis. Wow. Well, oh, you know, and I want to say one more thing. Um, you can go to sba.gov and mm -hmm. download the financial templates from the SBA. Now, I'll admit that that was what I started with. I started by downloading the SBA.gov financial templates. And then I, of course, using my financial knowledge, I've added to it and changed it up a little bit uh, because I'm a seasoned pro. But if you don't have the money to afford somebody and you, you need something to start with, um, SBA.gov has some pretty good financial templates. Well, Thea's asking some really good questions here. She wants okay. to know, can you just, how do you decide on the acquisition costs? Is that like a um, involved answer there? Uh, um, well, you don't really decide on the acquisition costs. What you do is you have a certain amount of marketing money that you're spending and then you divide it by the estimated number of customers you think that that money is going to bring in. So for example, if you're doing SEO, which is search engine optimization, you might be doing pay per click, you might be uh, going to networking meetings or doing other types of business development. You have to account for all of those costs and then calculate the number or estimated number of clients that that brings in. And then that is your, now that's a very overall view of what your acquisition cost is. If we're really drilling down, there are some people that are gonna be more expensive to acquire than others. However, those people that cost more should potentially generate a lot more in business for you. Okay, I hope that answered your question as far as that. Uh, and it's slash, uh, forward slash Q. So to get your question uh, mm -hmm. there, but that's okay. Uh, she puts forward slash P. I know people who are watching this later can't mm -hmm. tell that. But uh, you mentioned Shark Tank. You know we're big Shark yes. Tank fans here, right? We I got to interview Good. Damon John a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yes. He was on our show and it did really well. So we love him. 
But why are some companies successful at getting funding? Because, you know, they do that on Shark Tank. You see some that are really successful. And then mm -hmm. there's others that just aren't. Yeah. So Kevin O'Leary, uh, who if you're a Shark Tank fan, you know, Mr. Wonderful, mm -hmm. he did a presentation and he summed it up so well that I just always quote him. He said that there are three things that every successful business who has raised capital on Shark Tank does really well. Number one, they're able to explain their business concept and how they're going to make money in 90 seconds or less. Hmm. If it takes you 17 minutes to tell me what you do, you're out of luck. OK, number two. They're able to explain why the team that they have, the management team that they have, can execute the business plan. And number three, they're able to answer every question about the financials without hesitation. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with Kevin when it comes to those three things. You have to be able to talk about your business plan in such a way that people feel like, wow, this person really knows their stuff. And I have an angel investor friend, Valerie, who says, if I, as the angel investor, know more about your business and your industry than you do, I will never put money in your company. Definitely. So you have to eat, breathe, sleep. <laughs> your guests, your customers, your clients, you have to know them inside and out. And you have to know that the, the, the companies that do really well already have a good business. Uh, it's already chugging along. And they know that if they can get another two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000, they can put the money in the right places that can make it explode to millions of dollars a year. Wow. Yeah. I need to know yes. that secret right now. Like, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> seriously. Well, gonna... you know, okay. So one of the things I tell <laughs> people is if you can start a business with no money or very little money, do that, grow it first and then go and get capital. Um, don't be in such a rush to get capital if you don't really need it. No, that's been my history with my businesses anyway, but I yeah. would like to know where I need to put it, the money to make millions. That would be fantastic. But we're coming to the end of the show. So I want to ask another question because I think this mm -hmm. is really important because we're such busy entrepreneurs. But how can I make the business plan writing process less painful? It, it just seems that <laughs> it's so, so much to do. Yeah. You know what? There is a lot to do with it. I think number one is deciding that you are going to do this as your project. It's just like deciding you are going to um, uh, redo your house or something like that. And, mm -hmm. and your business plan needs to be the project for the business, the big project for the business. Number two is putting time aside on a weekly basis in order to get the business plan done. So one of the things that I used to do is um, I'm a fan of Panera. I like Panera because they have, <laughs> yeah, they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I can sit mm -hmm. there as long as I want, as long as I'm eating something or I'm drinking coffee, nobody bothers me, nobody cares. And on Sunday, it tends to be quiet at the one that I go to. And I can not really concentrate in my house as long as I need to, because there's always something else that you want to do. So I used to go to Panera and just sit there and say, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to get a section of this plan done. I don't care how long it takes me. Um, that was one of the big things that I discovered really helped. And uh, before you know it, you have a very good document and then you send it to an editor to actually take a look at it and they should look at it for um, comprehension as well as grammar and punctuation. So oh, spend the money on tip. that. That's definitely mm -hmm. a good tip. So that makes yeah. it a lot less painful, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Let me thank you for coming on Encore, Cherie, the show for mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. 
if you have any questions about business plans or starting your own, make sure you contact Cherie. She's on Twitter. She's on Blab. She's at yes. Biz Plan Girl on Twitter. So make sure you follow her. You can ask her questions there. And join us next Monday, same place, same time. We'll be back with lots of valuable business information. And please don't forget to follow us as well on Twitter at Encore Institute and on Blab at Encore Book. So thank you all for joining in and thank you to our live audience. We really appreciate you. Have a good night. Night, everybody.